Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lisa and welcome to the very first video of 2023. So in the last month of 2022, I got really, really sick. So have been off YouTube for a while. So I thought the best way to start 2023 is a goal setting video, which I actually also did for last year. And even though I didn't get to review the last video, I already know that there were a lot of things that I did do very differently. For example, I think I talked about not traveling for 2022 and that was not how 2022 turned out but anyway more on that later but today I want to talk to you guys about how I'm goal setting for 2023 and also the best type of products that I'm using to have a very successful year and hopefully you guys can gain some inspiration from today's video so how do you set your goals the first thing is what I always do is I actually create a folder for 2023 I categorize my folder by year and every single year it has things for like for example my tax whatever but the first document for every new year is my goal setting so every time I do my goals I always put it in different categories the first thing that I always like to do is having a theme so for example the theme of your year can be like this year is all about working grinding etc or like the sole focus is achieving a healthy lifestyle so whatever your theme is I always think it's very good to have sort of like a big thesis statement type of thing just so it kind of gives your intention for the year and then I go into the different common categories so the common categories that I have are career financial family, personal, overall relationships, that could be for friendships or romantic. And the very last goal that I always like to have for myself is a fun goal. So it's not just all very serious goals and stuff like that. I like to keep some vague and some very, very specific. It's just because what I learned from last year also is to be very flexible with your goals and kind of be able to set them, but not be really upset if it doesn't work out that way because for example last year I really really went with the flow and it worked out for the better and a lot of my other goals were still achieved even though I thought I wasn't going to really travel and then I ended up traveling a lot so my biggest takeaway is probably just be a little bit more flexible with my goals but some that I will share for example my fun goal this year is I really want to go to Hawaii which I'm actually achieving because I already booked tickets. I would love to go to another surfing camp if possible. So last year I went to a surfing camp. I will leave a link to the vlog if you guys wanna check that out. But that was really fun and I would love to do that again. The last thing is also to go on a cruise because I haven't gone on a cruise with my family and then also to travel with my family a little bit more. My family goal is to see my family in Taiwan, which I'm also planning on achieving in February and spend more time with my immediate family because they live in Vancouver. For personal goals, I actually really want to read a book a week. I know that's aggressive, but last year when I made this goal, it allowed me to read just way more than I would have. And um, I want to watch less TV, sleep early, meditate, not medicate. Oh my God, meditate. Continue to work out Monday, Mondays through Fridays and also eat healthy, but actually like it. So a more long-term health goal. Oh, that was actually the category I forgot to add. Always have a health goal because that's really important and you always want to prevent diseases if you can. How are your 2023 goals changing from your 2022 goals? So in the beginning of 2022, when I first goal set, I honestly wanted 2022 to be a lot of work and I didn't really plan a lot of fun with it. And then I ended up having a lot more fun. So this year I'm keeping it a little bit more realistic. I realize that everyone always needs to incorporate more of a well-rounded goal setting so that's why this year I think that is a little bit different because that way it really makes all the really hard working days way better when you also have goals of having fun and being well-rounded so this year I'm already starting off with fun goals instead of just being super work focused what product do you recommend for the best type of goal setting one thing I learned from last year is having a full calendar, but I actually learned from my last year's mistake. So last year I got one of those desk 
calendars and the calendar was rippable, but because it was rippable, I wasn't able to keep it. So this year I got this calendar right here. What I like about it is I'm able to hang it on the wall, but also continuously flip through. So you'll be surprised, but I'm planning to travel with this calendar all the time just because it makes it very easy for me to kind of lay out my plans and major to do's and due dates. So this has been extremely helpful from last year. I think I just like learned not to do one of the rippable ones and have one that kind of comes together. The second thing is also, I really, really like um, the type of calendar where there's a lot of room where you can actually write things down. There are some calendars that just kind of cut off here. So I think it's extremely important to have a section for notes. So this is my calendar for January so far. You can see that a lot of it is already really, really packed. I like to also block times off when I'm away and traveling, etc. And what I'm planning to do is on the back page, having certain categories. So some of my categories, I guess I didn't really plan it out, but I like to go into each month and have a goal for that month too. So having January goals, January items that I have to complete. For example, one of the things that I have to complete this month is doing my taxes for 2022. A few categories I'm also missing is books, that I have to finish reading this month and also like a health goal that I wanna finish. So this is just like a really good back page and I think it's also important to pick a size that is easy to travel with. This fits in my carry-on actually and it's really light. It's just like I put it at the very bottom of my carry on and yeah because this way i can always plan for the rest of the year and i can also go back and see what i did for the rest of the year okay the next item that i think is important is obviously planners i honestly think that if you are an ipad planner a digital planner that's fine but i'm personally a written planner girl the biggest lesson that i learned from my last year's planner was that the planner itself was so bulky that I barely, barely used it. This year, I'm trying a way thinner planner. As you can see, this is how thin it is. I think this is by Moleskin. Yep, this is by Moleskin. And I also realized the layout that really works for me. I think when it comes to planners, um, everyone's planner preferences are so different and every single year I feel like I learn what I really, really need. So the two things I really need from my planner personally is I definitely need obviously all the days of the week. I wanted this on one side, but what I was really missing is a lot of room for me to take notes. A lot of the times that I have important meetings, I just want a little section where I'm able to take notes. So this is why I really like this planner and it will be easy for me to travel and go on big trips with. So this is one of them. I'm also trying something different this year. I don't know how successful this is gonna be. So I guess, you know, TBD on the end of the year, but something I realized also is that whenever I'm traveling, I always have random ideas and I really, really want a planner for my purse. But the issue is my purses are generally always very small. So that's why I decided to get a pocket planner. To be honest, I don't necessarily foresee this being my main planner or using it every single day as a planner, but I think it's mostly for note taking when I'm out and I have some ideas. I just want to really quickly jot it down. I know a lot of people can say, okay, well, well why don't you use the phone? But like I said, I'm a very much like visual and I want to write it down. I feel like it enhances my memory because it's already very short. Since we're already on the topic of books and journals, I'm just gonna go through the next two. So the next two items that are my must haves, and this one isn't like an, a reiteration, cause like I said, the previous three items are like, okay, what I've learned from my mistake, like what type of planner that actually works for me, etc. These two have always been a very big staple and has never been changing. So the two that I wanted to share is, this is just a general journal. This is also by Moleskin, and you can see here that I have a sticker that says May 2022. I'm basically gonna have another sticker when the journal is done. But this journal is just an overall blank journal. So the inside of this journal just literally looks plain. This journal just looks absolutely plain because this is just for me to write down my thoughts for the day, etc. I find that this is very, very helpful, especially whenever I am in between my therapy. If I really want to 
jot down my thoughts and if I have a problem or if I'm upset, whenever I write about it, it gets me to really think about it or rethink about it and kind of go through that. And also if there's any just like deep, deep, deep thoughts that I have, I like to just like keep it in here. I find that this is really helpful because it's kind of like a diary, but you only use it when you need to. So yeah, this is probably one of my favorites. I have this every single year and I always buy the exact same notebook. So hopefully by the end of my life, I'll just have a collection of all of my journals for all of the years. Okay, so the next product that I wanna share with you is the five minute journal. Um, this is what it looks like. This one is mine. There's a bunch of different colors that you can get, but this is the most traditional color that I'm sure you guys have all seen on every wellness Instagrammer or just every content creator in general, this is the color they have. But pretty much the five minute journal is always, always part of my every day. I absolutely love it. Every single page is the same, but that's not the point. The point is that the questions are prompts for you to answer. What I really enjoy about this journal is first of all, at the very top, there's always a quote and every one of their quotes actually really speak to me. Like it gives me the motivation of the day. There's a day section, if you guys didn't know, and there's also a night section. So the day section, there's only three questions. You just have to answer three things that you're grateful for. The second one would is what would make today great. And for that one, if you actually read the beginning part of the journal, it actually already tells you that what would make today great is you're only allowed to answer things that are within your control. So for example, you wouldn't answer like, what would make today great if it was sunny? Cause like, obviously you don't control that, but you can write something that you can do. So for example, like answer all my emails or something like that. And then the last one is the daily affirmation. And this is where you kind of write something like a statement um, that is positive, that basically rewires your brain. So for example, if you're really struggling financially, then your daily affirmation could be like, I'm very wealthy or I am making a lot of money or something like that. And then when it comes to the nighttime, you can write the highlights of the day, um, three good things that happened to you that day, and then also what you learned today. So whenever I am active and I'm using this journal, I just feel like my day is a lot brighter and it gets me to think like what my priorities are because in the morning I was already thinking like, what would make my day great? Like the three things I need to do. So I feel like this really sets myself up in a really good direction. If you guys wanna purchase this journal, by the way, because I liked it so much, I actually have a discount code for you. So I'm gonna leave it here at the bottom and you guys can purchase the journal at a discount. Okay, so another item that I have found so helpful, which you can also use my discount code because it's from the same website. And this is also helpful for your five minute journals because sometimes the toughest part for me about the five minute journal is doing the daily affirmations because I'm like, I honestly have ran out of affirmations. So I got this deck also from Intelligent and Change. It's called Mindful Affirmations. And what I love about it is that this deck, comes with all these affirmations that you can get inspiration from. And it also comes with this stand. So actually my morning routine, usually after I meditate, journal, etc., I'll read some of these just in my head. And then I used to like select, which I need to bring this back because I stopped doing it for 2023, but I would pick my one main affirmation for the day. I also already sort of shortlisted the ones that are relevant for me because a lot of the deck, I realized that, you know, I already believe these things. So I wanted to work on the ones that I truly, truly need help with, which you can include in your five minute journal. So for example, this one says, I attract people who help me on my journey. And let's just say if that's the one that you really want to be like a theme of the week, you can, you can put it on this stand and leave it at your desk and you can pretty much just always be able to glance at it and just think about it. Cause I think the important thing is being able to think about it constantly so that you're able to rewire your thinking. So for example, like I think one that I think would be extremely relevant for a lot of people is the financial one. Where is it? Okay, I can't find it right now, but I know there's a financial one. I think it's like, it's like financial, I am financially abundant and it comes to me effortless. There you go. See, I don't, oh, there you go, right here. Yeah, you're right. 
So this one I think is going to be relevant to a lot of people because I feel like everyone always makes financial goals that they want to like make more money and do better in their career. But for example, like this one is financial abundance comes easily to me and easily and effortlessly because I think naturally everyone thinks like, oh my God, the economy is so bad. It's so hard to make money. And I think that's what perpetuates that reality of it being really hard to make any money. But when you start believing that it is extremely easy and you just like every time you read this card, your brain makes you and like helps helps you rewire it. It just makes your reality a little bit better. So anyway, I really, really enjoy this deck. There are so many products from Intelligent Change that I love. These two are definitely my top two that really, really help me with all of my goals. One thing I forgot to mention earlier um, as part of my reading goal is I have a Kindle and the reason why I needed a Kindle is because since I travel so frequently, I always want to try to eliminate weight. So by having a Kindle, I can cram a lot of books in this very little device and being able to read constantly. I think reading a lot also is what helped me a lot last year because I realized that when I read a lot, it really helped me change the way that I behaved. Being on this like constant learning journey, I think is extremely important. So in one month, I like to split my books in half. So I like to read half nonfiction and half fiction because you still want to have that joy in reading. And you would be surprised at like, the number of learnings that you can actually get from fictional books as well. Even if you are someone who is very addicted to nonfiction books like I am, I still find a lot of help and inspiration from fictional books. That's why I like to divide my books in half. The last three things I wanted to share are just things that personally give me wellness. So the first one is tarot cards. I feel like a lot of the times when I'm lost, I like to just read a tarot card. I know that a lot of people don't believe in this stuff. So obviously, you know, take this with a grain of salt. I personally do. You can see how worn out my tarot card deck is. It's like just whatever. I'm like taping it back together. I also bring this with me on every trip because if you guys didn't know, this was how I traveled across Europe. Like I would be like, do I buy a one-way ticket or do I buy a return ticket? And then I'll let the cards decide and then I'll just do that. And last year I went to San Francisco because I was like, what would my life look like if I go there versus what would my life look like if I didn't. And then I base my decision off of that. Not saying that's how you should live your life. It just personally gives me some fun and also I enjoy it. So next item is a candle. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I'm absolutely addicted to candles. One of my favorite candles is definitely by Diptyque. This is probably one of my favorite, favorite candle brands in the world. Um, the smell is just so nice. And one of my favorite scents is roses. So I actually have already gone through like three of these. Um, um, and yeah, so definitely check that out. I have these candle accessories. As you guys can see, they're very, very worn out. These were also included in my monthly favorites video. If you want the links to any of these things, you can find it all on my Amazon storefront. But this is a electric candle lighter. I just really like this because since I light so many candles, it isn't worth me getting a bunch of lighters. I just think that's so bad for the environment. This is rechargeable. And I also love that this is long, so I'm not burning my finger. Back when I was using the shorter lighters, I just didn't really like it. And I know that there are longer lighters, but it is not that pretty and it takes up a lot of room. The second thing is like the candle accessories. So like the wick cutter um, and just like digging the leftover wax away. I just absolutely love that. And then one to cover the um, fire, I guess. The flame, there we go. Which one is to cover the flame? Like this. Like this. Actually, I, I like to use lids a little bit more just so I don't have to smell it. The last item is the Caudalie Elixir. You guys might know that I have, I go through these like chocolates. I use this so often. I have the mini bottle and the full size bottle for me at home, but I love bringing this around because especially during a long day, I like to just spritz. It just feels really, really nice. I brought this all throughout Europe as well beach day. It's just so refreshing and it has this scent of like wellness. So anyway, this is my last favorite product. So that is pretty much the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the very first welcome back video of 2023 and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.